cave rescue tech which had been developed on Mendip. The underground shots were taken in Swildon's Hole in the village of Priddy near Wells. In this cave, there were two problems to solve. One, how to get an incapacitated subject back through the sump or siphon, and the other, how to haul a subject up the 40-foot pot. This cave is visited a great deal, but accidents in it are surprisingly few in number. We have, on occasions, had to haul people up the 40-foot pot, and a straight pull presents three difficulties. First, there is not enough room for the hauling party and lifeliners at the top. Second, the hauling rope tends to get stuck in the crack by the drain pipe. And third, it is quite difficult lifting the subject over the lip at the top. We have solved these difficulties by fixing a permanent iron bar in the rift above the 40 known as suicide's leap. To this can be fixed a pulley to take the rope so that the hauling party can work from the water rift above the keyhole where there is plenty of room. We have also found this pulley useful when, under flood conditions, it is impossible to climb the ladder and it may be necessary to lower somebody down the pitch to render assistance to anybody trapped in the lower part of the cave. This is the entrance to Swildon's Hole. In common with 18 other important caves on Mendip, there has been a notice erected outside it by the Mendip Rescue Organization to tell cavers what to do in the event of a cave accident. The notices all give the name of the cave, the telephone number of the Wells Police, and they say where the nearest telephone is to be found. one of the blanking off caps in the high pressure system of the apparatus and this shows how it is fastened on to the pressure gauge which is attached to the third diver. Here is the blanking off cap of the lead which will come from the air cylinder. is under a pressure of 120 atmospheres. The whole apparatus can be packed together quite neatly into five parcels for carrying down the cave. The first practice we had with this was in a swimming bath with a scale model of the first sump in Wilton's Hole. This sump is six and a half feet long and one foot three inches in height at its maximum. Here you see the scale model being lowered into the shallow end of the swimming bath. Here are the divers on their first trip through the artificial sump, approaching it from what we take to be the near side and coming through to the far side of the sump. When they get to the far side, they wrap the subject up in a simple St. John's Ambulance carrying sheet by means of cords. These cords should be done up from the feet towards the head. This is the wrong way to do up a carrying sheet. The reason is that the last minute adjustments which have to be made to the upper part of the body 
can be done very much more easily if it is done up this way. This is the correct method of doing up the carrying sheet. The lead weights, about 25 pounds of them, have to be put into the sheet with the subject to correct for buoyancy. The belt around his waist holds in place the high pressure tubing for the compressed air, and then the whole parcel can be done up. The face mask has to be fitted fairly carefully, and it is necessary to draw the back plate well down over the back of the head before tightening up the side straps. The side strap which is most likely to be made too tight is the one around the chin, and sometimes this has to be readjusted so that it is comfortable. Here the subject is now ready to be put into the water and taken back through the sun. The ideal state of buoyancy is one in which the divers and the subject both sink slightly in the water. That is because if you are too buoyant, you tend to rub against the roof of the sun as you go through, and that is not at all comfortable. on the near side of the stump. And bringing the subject up towards the shore again. After this practice, we decided to do one down in Swilton's Hole itself at the first stump. This diagram is a longitudinal section with lay figures to give scale. This sump can be free-dived quite easily, and here you see somebody without any breathing apparatus going through it and taking a tube with him. We hoped that this might act as a speaking tube, but it didn't work too well, and now we use telephones. Here the divers are getting ready, and here is Dr. Alan Rogers showing the correct way of putting on one of these masks. The divers are now ready to go through the stump, taking with them the spare empty mask for the subject who is on the far side. That is the second one. He has just got through now. In the meantime, it is necessary to watch the air supply carefully on the near side of the stump, and this is a whole time occupation for the observer. On the far side, the subject is being done up, as you see, and a lifeline is attached to the rope nearest to his feet, because he will be drawn gently through the, sub uh, through the sump, feet foremost. This is the easiest way of controlling the motion of the subject. They are ready to go through now, The first diver has gone through, and the subject is being taken through now. In the meantime, the lifeline is being gently pulled from the near side, and the air tube is also drawn back so that there are no coils left lying about inside the sump itself. Here is the first diver just coming through on the way back, and here comes the subject followed by the second diver. The subject is brought onto the land, and then, after he has had his mask taken off, he signifies that he has enjoyed his trip. The water is about 51 degrees Fahrenheit down in the sump, and it is not at all a comfortable place to carry out practices. Nowadays, when we want to have practices, we always go to the swimming bath, where the temperature is over 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and where many people can be trained in the use of this stumping apparatus in case need be. The 
problem on the 40-foot pot was solved by fixing an iron bar and pulley for a hauling rope. The diagram in the next picture is a longitudinal section of the 40-foot pot, showing the water rift with its stalagmite barrier, the keyhole, the drain pipe, and the waterfall coming from the drain pipe. The iron bar was fixed there, and the hauling rope is pulled by the hauling team in the water rift itself there. Here you see the subject being brought towards the foot of the 40, getting ready to be hauled up. The subject in this practice weighed 16 stone, and when the people at the top began to pull him up, they found that they couldn't quite manage it. But when we had six people up at the head, we found that it was possible. And the telephone that had been fitted from the top to the bottom of the pitch was used to tell the people down below the cause of the delay and to hear from them how things were getting on their end. Now everybody is ready and the pulling has commenced and the subject is being hauled up, accompanied by another member of the rescue party on the ladder. That is quite essential because it may be necessary to prevent the subject who is being hauled up the pot from being caught by any obstruction on the way up. And also, to a certain extent, it is possible to keep him from getting too much water beating down upon him where it falls down the pitch from the drain pipe at the top. Here is the pulley with the rope in position, which is used for hauling. The rope which we use is two and a half inch proofed sisal. We found this better for hauling than some of the thinner synthetic ropes, such as nylon, because it is much easier to get hold of a rope which is fairly thick. Here the subject is getting near to the top of the pitch and a thin stream of water is seen coming down. This photograph is taken from a higher point of view and you can see the drain pipe at the head of the pitch through which the water is channeled. The best method of getting the subject over the lip of the pitch is to draw him up until his feet are above the level of the drain pipe. Then the man on the ladder can pass a rope attached to the subject's feet to the lifeliners and they can draw the feet in. And as they do so, the hauling party can let the subject down about three feet. In this way, it is very easy to draw the subject onto the lip of the 40-foot pot up at the top. That technique was not followed in this particular instance, but another one was used which worked quite well. The subject found the whole process very comfortable. The problem of getting the subject out of the cave from the 40-foot pot does not present any very great difficulties once the keyhole has been passed. That is rather tricky, but it can be done all right if you've got some nice tall people to push the subject up to the right level. If the subject is a very large one, however, it may be necessary to take him out of the carrying sheet in order to do that. Here you see the subject has been brought out from the entrance to the cave at the end of the operation. These photographs were taken on two separate practices which were arranged by the Mendip Rescue Organization in order to try out this particular technique of hauling a subject up the 40. That is the end of the film.